Mystery continues to surround the murder of tech mogul Bob Lee, the Cash App founder, husband, and father of two, stabbed to death this week not far from Google's headquarters. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. I have my signal. Unleash hell. Bob Lee, a tech executive and software engineer who founded the popular mobile payment company Cash App, was mysteriously found stabbed to death on April 4th, 2023 at around 2.30 in the morning. This surveillance video obtained by DailyMail.com is exactly what investigators are looking for. CCTV capturing tech titan Bob Lee moments after he was stabbed early Tuesday in San Francisco. At 2.35 in the morning, the injured 43-year-old appeared to be trying to wave down a passing car which drove away before Lee comes clearly into view outside the doors of a condominium complex. 365 Main, crossing of Folsom and Harrison, split stabbing. Lee, according to the San Francisco Standard, dialed 911 and screamed, help, someone stabbed me. That cell phone is a critical piece of evidence in a case like this. San Francisco's DA, Brooke Jenkins, says detectives are looking at every angle. When we are dealing with a case where the suspect is unknown, you are trying to interview anyone and everyone who may have had contact with the victim leading up to the time of the, of the crime. Lee, perhaps best known for creating the mobile payment service Cash App, was a tech icon who lived in San Francisco for years before recently moving to Miami. Police scouring the neighborhood Lee knew well for any potential clues. We are not commenting on evidence, nor will we speculate on the circumstances surrounding this horrific crime. As San Francisco comes under scrutiny for a recent rash of crime, including a homicide rate that's risen in past years, Lee leaves behind two children, including a heartbroken daughter who writes, I'm devastated that somebody would be so cruel to take away my father's life. A life cut short in a murder that remains a mystery. But was Bob Lee simply a victim to the rising crime rate in San Francisco? Or was his murder a result of something much darker and sinister? And is it possible that his passing could be directly connected to the mysterious recent deaths of other cryptocurrency billionaires? And is it also a coincidence that our government just launched their own cash app called FedNow? My name is Devin Worlds and we'll be discussing all of this and more today. On Up TV. The 43-year-old had recently relocated to Miami, in part due to rising crime in the city. We still don't know if this is a targeted or random attack. What up, y'all? It's Devin with Up TV, aka the Doc Connector. And before we continue this video, I wanted to quickly remind everyone that you can click the link in the description of this video to check out the newest Up TV merch. Use the promo code SOCEEZ to get a 10% discount on all Up TV merch. Join the movement and purchase gear that exposes the truth about the world we currently live in, or gear that inspires yourself and others to strengthen your faith in Christ. Never get caught up wearing clothes that subliminally hide satanic symbols and messages in it again so don't waste any more time click the link in the description or use the merch shelf below and get your up tv faith merch today on october 28th 2022 billionaire nikolai mashegian tweeted that the cia and Mossad mpedo elite are running some kind of sex trafficking entrapment blackmail ring out of puerto rico and caribbean islands they are going to frame me with the laptop planted by my ex-girlfriend who was a spy, they will torture me to death. According to reports, Mashagian, the 29-year-old co-founder of MakerDAO, was found dead in San Juan, Puerto Rico, just three days after tweeting this alarming message from his personal Twitter account. And this wasn't the end. As soon after the death of Mashagian, more crypto billionaires would begin to mysteriously die. While the mainstream media calls these strings of deaths the crypto curse, those with eyes can see that this is clearly not a coincidence and bob lee just happens to be the next crypto billionaire to be slain something really weird is going on in the world of crypto and high-tech finance and don't just take it from me take it from the facts a lot of those executives are dropping like flies case in point 43 year old bob lee he leaves behind a wife and two kids and they don't have any suspects in custody on this death. 
really weird. But maybe what's even weirder is that a lot of crypto guys have been dropping dead just since October. Three to uh, top crypto executives have dropped dead. And joining me now with all these details is Caitlin Becker. She's a senior reporter with TheDailyMail.com. So who are the others and what are the circumstances, Caitlin? They're all very different circumstances, Ashley. I mean, and we're talking international heads of crypto. Um, Nikolai Mushegian, who's only 29 years old. Tian Tian Kulander was only 30. There was a head of a Russian crypto. We also have Gerald Cotton, Matthew Mellon, one of these was from Canada. This is going back to 2018. There was about five, I believe this makes the sixth, head honcho in crypto who's died under mysterious circumstances. Um, Vyacheslav Tarin, who is Russian, died in a mysterious helicopter crash. The circumstances around that are still kind of up in the air. 30-year-old Tian Tian Kulinder died in his sleep. I mean, this is 30 years old. And the circumstances around Mushegians, which he was a crypto leader, he drowned off the coast of Puerto Rico the same day that he was tweeting very paranoid, very disturbing messages about the CIA and Mossad being after him. You know, following his death, it was revealed that he obviously had mental health issues, which I think was very clear. But it's hard to look away from the fact that all of these deaths happened very bizarrely and in pretty quick succession in a relatively small field. Today, people and businesses expect to make and receive payments at the click of a button any time of the day, every day of the year. And most expect their financial institutions to offer or support payment services that meet the speed and convenience they seek. In fact, three in four businesses and two-thirds of consumers surveyed think it's important that their bank or credit union offer faster payments. Right. Financial institutions interested in meeting these demands can use the Federal Reserve's upcoming FedNow service Ooh. to build innovative payment offerings that what? can help them retain and attract customers Holy. and avoid losing out to the competition. Wow. With the FedNow service launching in 2023, uh -huh. the time to start preparing is now. With all the strange circumstances surrounding the deaths of these crypto billionaires, the question most people want answered is who is responsible for their deaths and why. And while these murders remain a mystery, you might find the answers that you are seeking simply by following the money. Banks all over the United States are about to adopt a new system called FedNow. FedNow, which is a government controlled cash app system, will be launching this July and it's clear for some that this will be a system of control and tyranny. Uh, last hour, I, uh, I played these happy little commercials from the Federal Reserve uh, about the Fed now. It's a new service for all of the banks, which will, which will make the transfer of funds, you know, whether you're out shopping or you're a business owner or you're doing bank to bank transactions, you just run everything through the Federal Reserve and it'll happen fast. And I thought, yeah, isn't that exciting? It's very exciting. Now they're claiming that this is, uh, this is the alternative to a CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency. Doesn't really sound so much like a alternative as much as a, uh, I don't know, system to run that on. Normally, regular folks like you and me and people in the audience, we don't interact with the Fed. We're not used to that. We don't like the Fed. We don't trust them very much. And so what they want to do is say, just have a little taste. You'll see. It's going to be great. Just have a little taste. This is a, this is a stepping stone to a CBDC. This is our first interaction to using the Fed directly so that we can become more comfortable with it, so it's normalized. And then after this, you're going to get a central bank digital currency. We already know this because there's a billion government reports talking about how they're going to design it, what it's going to look like, why people should use it, what the principles should be behind it, all of that kind of stuff. So we know a CBDC is coming. This is just the first step in that process to try to normalize people interacting directly with the Fed in this sort of high-tech uh, instant transfer payment uh, portal so that a foundation is being laid for a future central bank digital currency and not just any kind of central bank digital currency but a central bank digital currency that is programmable 
trackable, that you, you won't have any privacy with the things that you're doing with the CBDC, that it can be controlled and manipulated. This kind of thing is actually being written into the code. They don't use the word central bank digital currency, but they, but they outline it in such a way so that that has to be what they're talking about. So it's not creating the CBDC. That's not what this is no. aiming to do. It's just laying the foundation to make it easier to use it in certain kinds of commercial transactions. So is it a coincidence that the government is launching their own cash app system while many crypto billionaires are being killed off? I personally don't think so. When we warned people that the dollar would be replaced with digital currency, we were called crazy conspiracy theorists. But now the feds are coming right out and revealing they have been secretly working to create a federal digital currency along with the system that is compatible with this new currency. The so-called elite are actively creating the beast system spoken of in the book of Revelation, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are removing any and everyone they consider to be the competition. So they want to be able to control, they want to be able to turn your money off and on, which they can do in an all digital system. And what we're now seeing at the state level is real pushback by consumers, by citizens, by state legislators saying, we don't want to be controlled by an all digital system. There's a huge push to continue to make sure to preserve cash. You know, not just, not just in the United States, but in Europe, because an all digital system gives ultimately the people who control the central banks and the, and the banking system an ability to literally turn on and off your money if you don't do exactly what they say. And exactly what you say includes taxation without representation, healthcare mandates, and literally taking away your kids. But what are your thoughts? Sound off in the comment section and let me know. And because there will be no Up TV without viewers like you, I would like to give a special shout out to anybody who has donated to or supported the channel in any type of way. This is Devin with Up TV. I love you, family. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. As always, give your life to Yeshua, and I'll holla at y'all later. Peace. I was just going to say, either there is a curse or there are some very angry crypto customers who lost their shirts, maybe. Thank you for watching Up TV. If you like this video and would love to see more, check out these great videos here. And don't forget to subscribe to Up TV and Up TV 2 for even more great videos.